God's love is a subject where we can understand the the multi dimensions of His nature. See, you can when you view a building, uh, there are different ways you can view that building. When you see from one side, say for example Taj Mahal or a, 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 a big uh, uh, high rising tower, right? When you see from different different angles, you will find that it is beautiful in different different ways. And then when you go inside that place, you will see even more beautiful things. In the same way, we need to understand God's love in different different angles, right? Only then you will be able to understand so deep how much His love is. Without which, you see God's love in one side, you will not be able to get a complete picture. When God or when, when any person loves another person, when they love goes deeper, what happens? They go to any extent to show that love. It might look very strange and crazy for others, but the people who are involved, right? It might it might be going very deeper. Read Romans 5, 7 and 8. Romans 5, 7 and 8. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet perhaps for a good man someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. See, the logical thing is, if a person is good, really good, the logical mind is, if a person is really good, scarcely, it is also very rare, for very rarely, a person may attempt to give his life for a righteous person. He's so good, so, but even giving that person's life is, is not an easy thing. So, it's, it's a very scarce thing. You cannot find such things on the earth. That's how the logical thing is. Okay, that person was really, really good. So this person went and gave his life and that too cannot happen in a common way. It is a very scarce thing. That's the a, that's a human logic. But Bible says that God demonstrates his love, own love towards us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Which means that it is, there is no logic. In this love, the lo love that God showed us, there is absolutely no logic. Why God has to come and die for a sinful man, so wretched man, who is doing all the wicked things, right? There is no logic here. God is saying that it is beyond the human logic that the, that's the way the love of God was shown to us. We see, we, we were studying about the sons of God, right? And how the, the whole world is betrayed by various demons and various gods, right? And, and, and the one thing that you can always see from them, the way that they were interacting with the human beings was no love. Absolutely no love. You give me sacrifice. Go to an extent of even human sacrifice, right? No mercy, no love. You give me this, then I will do something for you, right? Even today, like the how the uh, the the rock stars, right? How the famous musicians, how they go and sell their soul. They have they have to make a blood covenant, right? For their albums to go around the world. Do you know that those, those things happen? They give sacrifice of their own soul. They sell their soul, which means that you are you belong to that demon, and then the demon will do something for you, right? That is the way all these gods were dealing with the humanity, right? You have to give something so precious for from your side, even your own soul. Even if they make a blood covenant, all those things they do, then these demons will give the power to achieve something in life for some time on earth. Have you seen any rock star, famous rock stars dying a normal death? Even you take the life of Michael Jackson, right? The so great king of the pop, right? His death was so mysterious. The enemy gives something for them for a short time, okay? And after that, he will destroy their life, completely tarnish their life. Their life will be so ruined, the way they die will be so mysterious. The people are saying that he was overdosing himself and then he died. The demons will not leave them. They will be for a short time, they will give them a time to become famous. And people buy, people crave for that famous, becoming famous, right? And after that, that's it. They, they, they will be die brutal death. Right? That's the way these demons, the, the gods of this world were trying to get things from the human beings, take their own soul, they have to sacrifice their own soul for them to get something for a temporary period of life. Right? But what Bible says in Romans 5 8. But God demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. He did not demand anything from us. We were in fact in a very bad state, worst state. Right? But still God came to demonstrate his love. Right? And he died on the cross for us. Right? The, the God of gods, the creator of all the things in this universe, he saw the state of the humanity, right? And then he came down from heaven, took the form of flesh, 
born in a manger where normally human beings doesn't born get born right manger right lived a simple life not a life of a king or a prince lived a such a simple life jesus was saying like even foxes are poles but birds have nests but the son of man does not have a place to even lay my head right and then he gave his life brutal death on the cross can you think of that love compared to the other demons which are trying to get things from the human beings just think of just try to compare how different it is the the god of gods who is the supreme of create creator of heavens and the earth he has to come down in the human flesh and die a brutal death that is beyond logic even the heavens are even bible says that even the angels are looking into this this is strange this is not the way the kingdom of god operates they 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 they're looking at this as a very strange thing right that's why bible says in the first peter that even the angels are desiring to look into this gospel this is so strange this is like this is not even logical this looks absolutely strange that the god of heaven has to come down in the human form and die for the humanity which is like not even good they are they are the worst state they are worst sinners they are doing all the nonsense how god is doing this it's a it's it's out of logic it is not in logic at all because of god's love god's love it it trampled every human comprehension every comprehension of the heavenly beings and and god demonstrated such great love towards us read ephesians 3:17 to 19 that christ may dwell in your hearts through faith that you be rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and the length and the depth and the height to know the love of christ which passes knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of god paul is saying to the ephesians ephesians right be rooted and grounded in love that is the foundation for you right you if you are going to stay stable if you have to stay stable you have to stay in god's love and and he says that when we able to comprehend when we are able to understand the the height and the depth and the width and the length the different dimensions of love right like we were thinking about that building right a building has it's a three three dimensional building right one one dimension gives one one beautiful way of looking at that building right and when you go inside the building you might see something beautiful even more beautiful right so what paul is saying here is you have to understand you have to comprehend god's love in various dimensions right and then you will be able to have fullness of god what god really wanted us to have like jesus said i have come to give life life in abundance fullness right that fullness you will be able to receive only then only when you are able to understand god's various dimensions of his love Do you want to know what is the bigger picture of life of human beings on earth or your own life on earth the purpose of your life on earth you need to know god's love you want to be satisfied inside you always want to be joy and, and peaceful you always wanted to have that that comfort that in the embrace of somebody hugging you right and, and and comforting you you need to know god's love in the midst of absolute chaos in the midst of trials and tribulations you if you want to still stay in peace you want to still see the bigger picture of god's purpose in your life you want to have hope in your life you need to know god's love amen so we are going to now see the the four dimensions of god's love let's read romans 8 38 and 39 this portion of the bible as you can see always paul is writing about principalities powers principalities and powers right and that's the new testament way the greek way of telling about the the fallen angels the fallen gods how they separated the humanity from the true living god and how they were able to deceive them and not make them to know that who god is who what god's love is and that's how they were deceiving the humanity right and this verse clearly says that if you see all the things that he is talking about angels not principalities not powers the things that are present things to come height or depth no other created thing right shall be able to separate us so what paul is saying is anything in this universe anything in the spiritual realm or in the earthly realm or in the demonic realm when you are coming close to god none of these things will be able to separate you from god's love there are three different realms in the in the universe three different realms god created heavens and the earth right it is the heavens above and the earth and then there is something was created because of the fallen angels it is called the hell or which is below the earth there are three different realms that are there and, and what paul is saying here is none of this realms all the three realms will not be able to stop my love for you no even if entire demonic realm tries to uh, captivate your heart and mind to take you away from me i am more than able to 
cap capture you from their hands and to save you and to show my love towards you. That is what it means, height or depth, right? In the another version, it says that no power in the sky nor any power in the earth, right? Nothing can separate you from my love. My love is so powerful. My, my love is so strong that it will be able to rescue you. Do not. Only way it can, you can escape from God's love is you yourself. And the enemy, the only way he will try to deceive you is saying, God does not love you. You see how weak you are. Bible says that even though we were sinners, Christ died for us. Hallelujah. So you have to understand that it is not based on your works, God's love has come. It is, it is, Bible is very clear about it. It is not because of your way of being righteous or unrighteous. My love is shown to you. Right? My love was displayed even when we are sinners. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You need to be so much convinced of God's love that nothing can separate me from God himself. You need to be so sure of God's love that even if I am making a mistake, God will forgive me, but God will give me grace. I am going to receive his grace for me to come out of this mistake, not by my, my own strength. You will never, I am telling you, you can write it down. If you are in any sin or any kind of shortcomings in your life, you will never be able to overcome it except by God's love. Only when you know that God has given me grace to overcome this and only when you accept it, you will be able to overcome. Never think that by your human strength, your great ability, you will overcome sin. That is not going to happen. Hallelujah. God wanted us to come out of sin, but you don't try with your own strength. God wanted to receive his love, receive his grace, so that you will be able to come out of it. So God, who is above all, he came down from that high heavens. From that height, that's why you can see the four dimensions of God's love, right? The height and the depth. He was so high, we were so low. We were so low, right? Which is like living in sin and sickness and death and destruction. We are condemned for hell, right? God's eyes, we are not righteous. We are so low. But then God from high came so low, taking the form of a human being to pick us out, uh, out of the pit that is there where we are. So is he just picking us? from the depth and leaving us on the ground, okay, somehow we escape. Is he doing like that? He has lifted us up. We are seated in Christ in heavenly places, that's what Bible says. And God is going to lift us up, literally, in his kingdom. So high that we are going to be one with God. That is so high position. Hallelujah, I understand that. We are so deep condemned for hell, and God has come to rescue us, and not kept and okay, somehow live, you escape hell, that's all. No, he raised us up, to a high position that we are called the sons and daughters of God, right? That we are one with God. That is how His love is so deep and so high that it is it is unimaginable. That's the dimension of God's love. That's why it's written in Ephesians 2, 4 to 7. Read Ephesians 2, 4 to 7. But God who is rich in mercy, right? Because of His great love with which He loved us, great love, that's the, that's the distance, great love. It's between heaven and the deep pit. That much was His great love. That because of his great love, he loved us even when we were dead in trespasses. What is dead means? Where the dead bodies are kept? Grave. We were dead. In God's eyes, we were dead. Dead means what? Not even living on the realm of the living. We are dead. Dead means it should be in grave. We don't hug the body. Even if we are so dear person, we cannot keep the body. Okay, you have to put it in the grave. After one or two hours or one day, you have to put it in the grave. That is a, that is the state in which we were. We were dead in our trespasses. We were in like dead in grave in God's eyes. But God says, I have raised you up. What is it saying? Sixth verse. And raised us up together and made us to sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. This should excite us. There is no hope for humanity without Christ. There is no other way. That's why we say Jesus is the way. There is no thousand ways to heaven. Jesus is the only way. One of the very uh, um, important words that touched my heart even from the time I was growing is Ephesians 3.10. Ephesians 3.10. Read Ephesians 3.10. That's 9 and 10. To make all see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of ages has been hidden in God, who created all things through Jesus Christ, to the intent that now the manifold wisdom of God might be made known by the church to the principalities and powers in the heavenly places. So God, what he did, it seems that he raised us up and made us one with him, we saw last week, to be one with God, right? We are the body of Christ. We are one with him. The church is the body of Christ. That's what he's saying here. Might be made known by the church. So what God did was, the lowly beings, 
who are fit for nothing in the realm of the heaven, who are so lowly, God raised us up and made us as his sons and daughters, so that we are becoming one with God and became the body of Christ. And then God wanted to display his wisdom. You know what? This is how I work. This is how I show love to humanity. He displayed his wisdom to whom? To the same principalities and powers who are keeping us in a slave state. To the same principalities and powers, God displayed his wisdom through the church. Right? It is like equipping a, a person who is absolutely without any strength and then make that person to fight the same enemy that was against him. Amen. So we are looking into the subject of dimensions of God's love and we are seeing height and depth. Height and depth. Let's read Isaiah 30 to 15. Until the Spirit is poured upon us from on high, the wilderness becomes a fruitful field and the fruitful field is counted as a forest. The Spirit is poured upon us on high. Right? The Spirit of God, Bible says that like on, on the day of Pentecost, a mighty rushing wind came from above. Hallelujah. Right? Jesus came from above. The Spirit of God also came from above. Right? Because once Jesus departed from the earth, he wanted to give the humanity a comforter, right? A helper, a counselor, so that we will not go back to the old state. He wanted somebody to sustain the humanity, to always raise up to a higher level. And for that, a person, another person from on high is sent to the humanity. Uh, Jesus said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And how God is confirming that to us, that he has never left us nor forsaken us, is through the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. That's why we need to have a fellowship with the Spirit of God. Continuously, we have to be filled with the Spirit. That's why the Bible keeps on emphasizing on that we have to be drunk in the Spirit. We have to stay alive by the Spirit of God. And that's how our heart will continuously be able to understand God's love and will be able to show love of God to others. See, always know like we are human beings, we quickly forget things. Again, we'll go into a hopeless state, we'll go into a sad state. And that's what the enemy wanted, right? Even after knowing Christ, the enemy wanted to always make us down so that no, we will never rise up to a, a higher realm. Romans 5.5. 5. Romans 5.5. 5. Now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. So God's love is poured in our hearts through the Spirit. Right? That's how we will be able to even forgive a, a sinner, an in, enemy. Right? Was there so many bad things against us? When God's love captivates our heart, we'll be able to Yes, I am helping. Otherwise, we will, 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 if there's a gun, we will shoot that person. That much rage we might have. But when God's love is poured out in our hearts, we will be able to forgive any person, any person in life. That's why we need a spirit. And that's why the spirit of God was sent from on high. So that we can be fruitful in the kingdom of God. Let's read Ephesians 4, 8 and 9. Okay, so this is talking about one direction, height and depth. Right? Ascended on high, descended to the lower parts of the earth. Right? It shows about height and depth. So, Bible is saying that God came in the human flesh from on high, not just to be on the earth, but then he went to the lower parts of the earth, which is what? Is a hell. When Jesus went to the lower parts of the earth, and then he rose from the dead. Right? So, what Bible is saying is, because he raised up, when he ascended on high, it says he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. Which means that, because that love was from very high to lower depth, when he was raising back high, God was able to distribute the gifts to human beings because of that love. You need you need to comprehend this. Probably, I mean, I, you need to really know how God was able to give the gifts of salvation, how God was able to give the gifts of the Holy Spirit in the human being. It is because of that great love that the God of heaven has to go to the deeper pit where it is belonging to the place of demonic realm. That deep he went so that he can raise up again and so that he can give gifts to the human beings. If God's love was not that deep and high, human being would have lost on this earth. Like dinosaur who died probably many years back, right? We'd all been dying our sins, perished, doomed to hell, eternally separated from the living God. That would have been our state. But then God's love was so high and so deep that he was able to capture the humanity with his love. Right? By giving gifts. What are the gifts? Salvation is a gift. That's why grace of God is a gift. It is not earned. The grace of God, God was given as a gift. And salvation was given as a gift. That all the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit was given as a gift. And even the ministries was given as a gift. If you read, yeah, you can read you can this. So the gift of preaching, right? To me, it is given as a gift. I did not, so talented, I learned so much. It's a gift. God said, you have to rise up during this age. 
and I'm appointing you as a pastor to take care of my sheep. It's a gift. Right? So if you read 4.11, read 4.11, Ephesians 4.11. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. God's love was so height and depth, right? He's, he gave gifts to men. He gave gifts to men. It is not earned. He said, I'm giving. I'm giving. You rise up during this time of age and do the gift so that it, and, and use that gift so that it will edify the body of Christ. The church. Jesus gave the life for the church, the bride of Christ, so that they will be edified. They will know my love. They will know my love. They will understand my love. And so that they are edified, they will not fall away from my faith. God's love. It's so wonderful. God's love. It's, it's so high. You can't get over it. And it's so deep, you can't get under it. It's so deep. Right? You cannot measure that love. You cannot measure that love. It is so high, it is so deep. Now we are going to see about the width and the length of God's love. We understood about height and depth of God's love. Now we are going to see the width and length of God's love. We have been meditating on the subject of that God wanted a family on the earth. God already has a family in the heaven. God wanted a family on the earth. Ephesians 3, 15. What it clearly says, Ephesians 3, 15. From whom the whole family in the heaven and earth is named. So God is having a family there. God, is having, God wanted to have a family on the earth. That's why he created the humanity. That's why Adam was called as son of God. Let's take this verse uh, quickly. Yeah, Luke 3, 38. Adam was a son of God. He was not just a human being uh, God created. He was having the title of, he is a son of God. But we lost the position. Like the sons of God rebelled in the heaven. So there was already a rebellion happened in the heavenly realms. The sons of God rebelled. The same way, the sons of God on the human, the, in the earthly realm also rebelled against God. So they all went away from the family. They all departed from the family. Tada Baba, I don't, need, I don't need you to be God. We will do our own business. Right? They said, and they went away. Anything that goes away from God will become corrupt. Will become death. It, only death is the final thing for something that goes away from God. See, it is like the He is the source of life. If you separate yourself from the source of life, it will become death. Jesus said that I am the vine, you are the branches. Apart from me, you can do nothing. And as far as you are stuck with me, you will get give much fruit. But if you are separate yourself, you will wither away, you will die. This is so important. There is there is no way we can live life eternally separated from God. So, one thing we need to understand, apart from Christ, apart from Jesus, apart from the true living God, there is no life for us. We are already called as dead. So Jesus came for the dead people. Right? Spiritually dead, separated from God. But then ultimately we will become eternally dead also, if we are not coming back into this family. So, only the family will have life in eternity. All others will have death. Completely separated from God. That's why you see weeping and gnashing of teeth, they will be they will be eternally separated from God, right? That's that's the final destination for any creature in the heavenly realm as well as in the earthly realm if it tries to separate from God. So Adam was never created to be separated from God. He was supposed to have eternal life even on the earth. It is not that only heavenly beings were having eternal life. We are called, he was called as a son of God and he was supposed to have eternal life. So we see here, there were a rebellion happened in the heavens. The angelic realm also rebelled. They went away from God's family. And they all became demons, fallen angels, deceiving the humanity, right? Doing all the all the wrong things in this world, right? And they don't have redemption. They don't have redemption. They, they cannot come back to Swami. The door is shut for them. Because they understood God's greatness and glory because they were so close to him. They were in heaven. They understood God. But still they chose to rebel against God. And for them, once they have gone away from the family, that's it, cut off. That's why the demonic realm does not have any salvation. And that's the reason they want to take the humanity also along with them. I don't want you to have. I lost it, you also lose it. We don't want, you, you should not have salvation. But humanity was not like that. Humanity was not knowing about God's power and glory. They were not very close to God. They were all separated. We are in a different realm. God is living in heaven. He is in heaven. We are on the earth. That's why our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth. So which means that God is in heaven, we are on earth, we don't have much knowledge of who God is. Okay, so God saw the state of humanity, these people does not know me fully. So even though they separated from my family because of Adam's sin, 
I'm going to give them a chance to come back to my family. That is not available for the angels, the fallen angels. It is not available because they know him. Still they are rebel. But the humanity does not know him fully. Even after becoming Christian, so many scratching on head is coming. Whether Jesus is real. Don't be like that. Don't be unbelieving. That's why Jesus rebuked. Do not be unbelieving. I've come to give life. Do not be unbelieving. Unbelieving is a it's a sin in, in, the, in the sight of God. But still God gave chance. I'm, I'm working with you. Even though you are faithless, I'm still faithful. That's why the Bible says, even though you are faithless, I'm still faithful. Do not deny me. If you deny me, you are gone. If you deny me, you are gone out of the family. That's it. Then I cannot come bring you back in. Right? Do not deny me. Even though you might be struggling so many things, still believe. I am your father. I want to bring you back. And God wants to bring the humanity, the human family, the earthly family, still giving chance. Come back to my family. I wanted you to be one with me. We are going to see quickly a few verses and how it explains that we are separated from God. After we are saved, we are coming to His family. But what was our original state? Bible clearly explains it. Read Ephesians 4.18. Having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart. Just see the word alienated. Alienated means what? You are separated. Like You are, you are no more citizen of this. His country, his nation, you are an alien. Alien means not those, that, that, that's another demonic realm that is coming on the world. Right? Alien means like, who's not part of the country. Right? We are alienated. We are, we are no more belonging to his family because our understanding was darkened. We are foolish in our heart. There is ignorance in our mind. But God now bringing us into his family. We are no more alien. Yes, we are, that's why the Bible says we are the citizens of heaven. Our citizenship is in heaven. We are citizens of heaven. We are ambassadors of Christ on the earth. Right? See, you need to have a bigger picture of our salvation. Otherwise, you no, know, like you scratch around, like, what is this? You need to have that understanding that we were originally alienated from his life, the life of God. We were separated from his life. We were condemned for death and destruction and hell from that life. Colossians 121. And you who once were alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now he has reconciled. Alienated and we were not even. We were, we were like enemies of, of God. We were doing things which were against God. Right? We were doing so many things which were against God. We were alienated, we were also enemies. But the Bible says, you have now been reconciled. God has brought in. God says, I'm going to forgive you. Come back to my family. I'm reconciling you. Come to my family again. Read Ephesians 2, 12 and 13. At that time, you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in this world. But now, in Christ Jesus, you who are once far off, have been brought near by the blood of Christ. See the way, beautifully Bible explains. You are alienated, you are far off. You are not, you are not in, the city, in, in, in his country. You are, you are not a part of his, his citizenship. You are far off. You are alien. You are no more. You are not belonging to God. You are, you are not belonging to the commonwealth of Israel. Means like God chose the nation of Israel. All other nations were Gentiles. Under different gods. Deceived by different gods. But God is saying that, you are far off, but I brought you near. You are far off, but I brought you near by the blood of Christ. If the blood of Christ was not shed, I would not have done that. You are brought near by the blood. One final verse, Ephesians 2, 17 and 18. And he came and preached peace to you who are far off and to those who are near. For through him we both have access by one spirit to the Father. So we were far off and we were brought near. So his love was so wide that that's the other dimension we are looking into, right? We saw height and depth. We are seeing another dimension, length and width. He, was, he extended his love so wide that people who are far off are captivated by him. He brought them into his family. That's his, that is what it means. This should blow our mind. Man, what God has done for us? What God has done for us? His arms were so wide that we were far off. Worshipping all not the not the true living God. And God said, I'm going to captivate you and bring you into my family. Not just to live as a servant, to become his sons and daughters. Become his sons and daughters to rule and reign with Christ. That was the love that was stretching so wide and length and breadth. That's what Paul writes. Do not measure his love so wide and so deep, so high, that he brought us near into and, and joined us into his family. I love the picture of the Christ the Redeemer in uh, in Brazil, right? The way that they have built this statue, right? That the arms extending to capture all the humanity which has gone away from the true living God to bring them into His family, 
right? He was, Bible says in John 12, 32, If I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. Jesus was lifted up, raised from the dead, and he draw all people who are willing, who are willing, who are willing, who showed faith, who believed in the gospel, who believed in his love. He draw all people to himself. That's the model of the cross. One vertical, one horizontal. Height and depth, and the length and the breadth. Right? Beautifully displayed on the cross. And even on the cross, Jesus opened his arms wide before he died. Right? That come to me. Come to me. I, I, I came to give my life for you. Do not take it lightly. Do not take it cheap. My love is so wide, so high, so deep and so wide that you cannot escape my love. Come to my family. Come to my family. And when we understand God's love, when we receive God's love, we will be able to forgive any person in this world. Whoever is a wicked, crooked enemy of us, who has done so bad thing to us, still, when we are filled with God's love, that's why the Bible says in Romans 5, 5 that the love of God is poured out into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. When we are filled with God's love, we will be able to forgive anybody in this world. So, the only way for us to come out of bitterness, anger, and all the wrath and all the things that are corruption inside, it will kill us. If there, is a, if there is bitterness continuously in our hearts, it will destroy our lives. It will bring death and cancer to our body. You know, there is a scientific research that if you are always in that state of bitterness, it can lead to cancer. It's a corruption. It is just showing up in a physical form. Already corruption happened by bitterness. So, God is saying, receive my love. Receive my love. And you will be able to forgive anybody in this world. You will be able to endure and, and have long suffering. And you will be able to overcome any challenge in life if you are able to understand my love.